Welcome to Drop the Puck Live, and we're here at Plant Ice Witness. A couple of fixtures that were already played last night, Ben. We've got the Scimitars, we're at Whitley Warriors, uh, had visitors of Whitley Warriors, and uh, Whitley went out 4 2 winners. And Solihull Barnes, who are today's visitors, on the end of a 10 2 defeat. Yeah, so uh, just a little gun to the table there, which meant the Solway still flying high as are Whitley. But, um, well, you know, Solihull Barons today is going to be a, a tough opponent for a wild side that is still settling in, shall we say. Well, of course, last week they, they had the Whitley here and, and, well, they got schooled a little bit. Hopefully they'll have uh, taken a lot from that and uh, worked out all the mistakes they've got. But certainly, the one thing they've got to do is start getting their foot into the table, otherwise they're going to start finding themselves a little bit towards the bottom, Ben. Yeah, so as you saw the results there, obviously, Solihull on the back end of a 10-2 defeat to the league lead, the Solway Sharks last night. Um, and then the Scimitars uh, held Whitley Warriors to 4-2. Uh, obviously, they went down the Scimitars, but yeah, there was a good result for them. Uh, there is one other result that's already been played today, and that is the D-Side Dragons against the Sheffield Scimitars. Dragons back in hockey. Ooh. Yeah, I know, it's a long time coming. Two and a half years, Gary. And? And they won. Wow. So they took the Scimitars to overtime, and it was James Parsons, the captain for the Dragons, that's netted the winner there. So it's a 5-4 victory for the Dragons in overtime. What a way to come back. Yeah, well done, Dragons. I mean, yeah, what a way. And overtime as well. I know, so yeah. So value for money there, <laughs> aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, the other games that are played today are Whitley Warriors against Nottingham Lions and the Blackburn Hawks are going to welcome the Sharks all the way down on that long travel. All oh, right, so it could be interesting. Uh, there's a couple of games there that could be de you know, determining how the tables are going to start to look. I know we're early doors just yet, Ben, but certainly teams are starting to find their feet early, like Solway, like Whitley, but it's teams like Solihull who are just nipping at their heels. That defeat last night, how will that affect them? Well, you've already got, I was going to say, that breakaway group of Solway and Whitley running away. You know, to Solway Sharks, top of the table, 11 points. Warriors in second place, 10 points. Behind them, that Billingham star side that we saw last year, that young star side, supported by the experienced pillars, the likes of Elder and the guys there, they're in third place and they're showing good contention this year. The Barons, fourth. So the results don't really show truthfully what's happened and you know some they've had some bad results however they're holding the place in the table so it's interesting that because billingham were on uh, the flip side last year where they were quite low down and people were beginning to wonder whether this is the beginning of their slide yeah it, it's far from it was it they've used it as a bounce and they've, they've got the foot in the bouncing back up again. And I tell you what, I can't wait for when the stars are here because it's going to be one hell of a yeah, game. Yeah, young team. They, you know, they, look, they look good, but obviously they've got things going well for them there. They know what they're doing. Uh, it's, you can never write Billingham off. No, you can't. Obviously, the complete opposite end of the table, that basement battle, well, that was Sheffield Scimitars. Uh, so they now go to 6-0. and oh. um, The Dragons, obviously, above them. The Lions. And then you've got this mid-pack fight of the Barons the Hawks and the Wild <laughs> yeah so but it, Gary we're only what a handful of games into the season so far still plenty of legs to go oh I know yeah. and we, you know, it, it, we, we're saying we're worried about teams sliding that but as we've seen in the past you can get caught up in those bottom dwellers and that's it it's, it's like a quagmire it's difficult to get out of it unless you can start finding a form and we know witness of past I've been a team where they, you know, they, they just plug out games and suddenly they find their form and get up the table quite quickly. We know they love their cup games and stuff like that, but this season, I think we're, we're, we're seeing a, a kind of new look wild. There's a new few faces in there, but they're missing some key players from last year gone on to passages new. And I, th I think they're just finding it a little difficult to get their Well, foot. you mentioned, you know, missing key players and passages new. The Wilder welcoming the return of defenseman Chris G. And I think after last week's performance, he's a crucial chess piece in that, in that set yeah, now. Yeah, without a doubt, yeah. Uh, so G's going to be there. But for me, the ones you want to keep an eye out for today, the return of number 89 for the Wild, Matty Barlow. Barlow is a def he's a, an offensive, defensive player. It's weird to say. He will take the puck to your throat. It's one of them. And then Nicholas Otterson for the Barons. But, um, Gary, I think it's about time to head over to the ice. Well, it's maybe time to drop, drop the, the puck. puck. Well, there was some unfortunate news in the world of hockey this week as we lost one of our own, a brother in arms, Andre Pyatt, 
former hockey player at he was at Sheffield he was at Whitley he unfortunately lost his life and before the game today we will honor him with a minute applause So the minute applause by both teams, quite rightly. And the things that Andre did for the sport, not only was he a great family man to his wife and son, but he was also a great family man on the ring as well, in the ring to other players. He was a stalwart of the game and he'll sadly be missed. Now the national anthem. Well, with the anthems out the way, it's time to play. And what a game we've got installed, Gary. Well, I'll tell you what, this is one game I was looking forward to because we know what these teams can be like at the best of times. Well, it's going to be interesting. Today's game going to be officiated by our Team Stripes. Wearing the bands is Ray Orms. He's going to be supported by Neil Herring and Tadzas Kolars. We see there... Unsurprisingly, starting netminder for the Solihull Barons is the one and only Graham Laverick. Laverick is a complete stalwart when it comes to the Solihull side. Certainly going to be a, a tough opposition to try and break down and beat. And if we look between the pipes on the other side, and it looks like it's going to be Finney that's got the nod. So Miles Finney going to be the start netminder. However, and interestingly. Jake Clowns is the backup netminder for the Wild today as Evan Cole's unavailable. So it's going to be a, a very interesting story. Is Finney going to be put under pressure from the likes of Otterson and all that? We see again there. Those results again, just so you know, it was 10 2 that Solway beat Solihull last night. Yeah, it was just some result there. And, you know, it's a, it's a long trip. You can see just a quick flash of the table there again. So starting teams are going to head to the ice. Now, it'll be interesting to see that we do welcome back Joe Greaves, Matt Barlow, Mike Gilbert, all to the wild bench. However, there is no Reese Edwards. There is no Evan Coles. There is still no Tom Jackson who's serving his suspension. There's still no Dan Hyde due to injury. But it does look like it's going to be Joey Coulter who's going in for the draw with Otterson. And we're away. And immediately, Barons try and pounce on that one and dump it into the wild zone. Into the corner. Looking to play it out. Good pressure early as Anderton under pressure. Shot blocked away. Backhand attempt and Finney sees that. Plenty of daylight in between him and the puck to get in the position ready. Hager tries to get over and beat out Crow. 
It's going to be the wild defence now in possession. Feed it up to Giuseco. Giuseco trying to knock it into the path of Coulter. And that's an interesting forward line, Gary, for the wild. Coulter, Hager and Giuseco. Well, I'm expecting it to be a little bit fruitful for them tonight. Well, here we go. Hager slams on. Tries to create some space. Look to put it in. Crow read the play well. Put him in his own body in the way. Falls to Maynard. Maynard takes his time. Swings it back. Tries to catch the wild off foot. Anderton. Formerly of the Telford Tigers. Put in by Barlow, and here's Barlow. Gilbert in the middle with him. And that's a good combination. They're going to be supported by Greaves. Well, this second line completely missing last week, Gary. Could there be the key turning point for the Wild? Well, it could be. I mean, they did miss a few players, I felt, in that last game. And one of the players they've certainly missed, we can see him there, number 83. The defenseman, Chris G, making his return to the Witness Wild. What a presence he brings. So face off will be left-hand side of Laverick in the Solway zone. Uh, Solly Hull zone, sorry. <laughs> Shot in, Murray. And oh! he scores from the point, Jack Murray. We see it again. Straight off the shot. Let one rip, five holes, Laverick, who's screamed by his own defender. Let's see it again from the other angle. Straight back, well worked play. Murray scores one early, it's now with this wild one. Solihull Baron zero. Well, bit of a shock start, but uh, I'm sure that's just what the wild need to get things going. Do apologise for that brief technical issue again there as it uh, our graphics just flash up. We'll get back to the game immediately like this now. And it is the Wild that have struck early. And they're making the Barons pay good. Four check pressure from Gilbert. Causing some mistakes. Loose puck. Back to G. Takes his time. Looks to push it off. Into the corner once more. Murray gets there first. Manages to dig it out, get it around the boards. Tried to clear the zone, kept in by the Barons. G gets his stick all over that one finally. Oh, looked like he was clearing the, sto uh, the zone, but Stokes had other ideas. Great stretch pass over the far side. Found Greaves, lets one on net. And Laverick's called into action. He spills up the loose change and is swept up by the Barons once more and turned back the other way. Well, it started a high tempo, Ben. It certainly has. Greaves takes another shot. Joe Greaves absolutely picks it out of the top corner over the blocker side. See it again. Greaves skates in, picks his corner, lets it pop. And wow, Laverick's left stranded. Well kind of start you'd really want Ben and we were talking about this earlier on the Wild needed to start getting their foot under the or feet under the table so to speak and they've started excellently here with two goals quickly and again apologies guys just a little technical issue there with the graphics coming in again but we are back underway and it's straight away well that table's going to have changed guarantee by the end of this one <laughs> We will deal with that shortly. However, the Barons need to deal with the onslaught that Witness are coming at them with. They have come out the blocks flying. Hopkins turns that round. Tries to force it past Prowser. Thrown forward. Dumped off the boards. Fights away into the corner, can he? Dig it out, Hopkins, he's found, it. found a man, shot comes in, that was Coulter who got the shot off, off the half boards, and here we go again now, back the other way with the Barons, but it's turned around in the zone, Hager with the four check pressure, Barons do enough to clear that finally, and that's going to have gone out of play, and we get stoppage in play there as it's blown dead. Well, early start, Gary. Yeah, interesting, it's kind of... High-paced game we kind of expected, but not with, uh, not with the score as it is. 
currently standing with uh, with this wild two, Solihull nil. Well, Anderson's now on the puck and he's certainly skating forward. Anderson, we know, knows where the goal is. Oh, yeah. He was fruitful for uh, Telford, but however, the Wild just seem a different animal today, dare I say. Well, it needed to be after last, uh, the last game. Shot comes in. Finney, plenty of time to get his pads in the way of that one. Hughes sends it around the corner and now it's tied up for Otterson. Swung out by Ruddick. Put back in by the Barons once more. Sent round by Anderton. Round the back. Mulcahy. Intercepted. Playing against the boards. They come out. The Wild. That stretch pass again. They managed to find it. Another shot on net. This time Laverick's all over it. Maynard under pressure from Giseko. Otterson. Looking for the stretch pass back. Finds it. Thrown forward from Mulcahy. Slater gets there, Greaves is out lining up Slater. It's allowed enough room for G to get in and Murray. They look to turn up the other way. Barlow plays off the boards. Dug away in this second line, fighting as hard as the first. And Gary, you can tell straight away. I'm gonna say it, it's those missing players that are making the difference right now. Well, certainly is. I mean, they've got the, the Barons on the hop here, and uh, you can see already they're trying to fight their way back into this one. Oh, it's out, spilled out in front. Laverick Gilbert's there trying to shovel the snow. Laverick finally gets to his skates. And we're looking to break away with Whitehouse, who's immediately shut out the play between Murray and Greaves. Well, oh, oh. Brooks, good effort, Slater. Finney stands tall. And the first real opportunity for the Barons. Finney's got the answer. Slater decides he's going to throw that one in. Sorry, Stanley, that was. Murray's going to scoop the loose puck up as we go for a quick change. And the Barons. Murray swings it round. Into the corner again. Digging away. Oh. Behind the net now, trying to feed that out. They're starting to test, aren't they? G swings and misses. It's gone to Jolly. Oh. Jolly put it out in front again. But it's going to be the Wild to jump on that loose puck. And here we go. Dumped in by Reynolds. Josh Reynolds. Such a prolific play for the Wild last year. What a cut back pass that was. Nathan Britton unable to get there in time. Back the other way. Prowser spills that puck up due to a key poke check from Williamson. Drop pass. Reynolds takes a shot. Sails wide. Stick side of Laverick. And Jolly now far side. Bodied off the puck. Williamson. Rides the check and then Whoa. his checker goes down. Another shot on net. Laverick's a great seal on the pipes. Kemp now in on the mix. And Kemp, the big defenseman, felt comfortable enough to pinch in there, which means that uh, I'm telling you now, the Wilder are running on a different gear immediately. <laughs> Certainly are. And they're looking for a third by the look of it. They're looking to put this game to bed early, Gary. Well. <laughs> Still a long way to go yet, Ben. Otterson puts it on net comfortably, put away as he rides Kemp into the boards. And there is a little bit of handbags after, as expected. Mulcahy loses that out, Giseko. It's definitely fast paced, Ben, because this going left to right real quick here. How long can he maintain this pace? Well, it was Jonathan Williamson involved in the little tussle on the boards there. And there's going to be a call. I did, I was wondering there, he did swing it in with his stick over at the top of his head. And that's going to be Mulcahy who's going to box. And it is Gary, it's going to be the first penalty of the day and goes the way of the home side. So the YKK witness wild get the power playing in the fresco environmental penalty bin. We find Philip Mackay. I love the name of that. <laughs> You've been very naughty, go sit in the bin. In the fresco bin. Face off is taken to the right hand side of Leverick and immediately the Barons throw that out as they start the penalty kill. Hughes all the way back, comfortable enough to pick that up and starts working forward. Still Hughes. High four check pressure has turned that puck over and they've managed to retain it with Crow. Dumps it into the corner and that's textbook penalty killing. Yeah, clever play. Thought he was going to have a little go himself there. Yeah, but, uh, Hughes finds Barlow. Barlow at pace, gets up right wing. 
goes to cut inside. Whitehouse gets a stick in the way at the right time. Greaves can't keep the play alive. Ottoson and Greaves battle away. Turn back around once more for the Wild. Britain throws it into the corner, swung around. Ottoson's going to be there again. Gets the body on from Barlow. This time, Maynard is the man for the Barons who's able to clear that out. And they found Ottoson. Ottoson one on one. Oh. Finney stands tall. Well, any other day of the week, he'd have put your money on Ottoson. Yeah, I, I, that looked like a dead cert because you know what he's like in front of the net. However, Nicholas Ottoson. Unable to capitalise there on the shorthand, and this time back the other way we go with the Wild Greaves. Couldn't quite control that, it's gone further than he'd like. Up on the board with Crow, great board play by Maynard. It's come out, however, it's a wild shot oh. out in front. That was Hopkins looking for another goal after scoring last week. Oh, and we again, fans it. on the shot. 23 seconds left on the power play, and this power play unit now are the Wild. Looking like it's going to be fruitful. Shot in from Giuseppe, oh. spilt out by Crow. Maynard gets a stick on it, just avoids Mr. Collar's head. <laughs> Ten <laughs> seconds left, and maybe I'm going to eat my words, Gary, because I think, unless they can get something out of this now, that's going to be a great penalty kill by the Barons. Yeah, under the pressure that they were uh, getting from the Wild, they've done well to uh, ride that one out. And they have done. Trap door opens, Mulcahy is back, we're back to five on five. And here come the Barons on the break, Anderson. Cuts inside. Tried to get the puck across. Great oh, well manoeuvre there by Britain. Shut that pass lane off by throwing his body on the ice. However, we're in a goal scramble at the moment. Talking about crashing the net. Even doubt, lie on it. Exactly, but <laughs> Barlow's done enough. Brings it out. Matt Barlow through the middle, through two Barons. Cuts through another two. Goes to go all the way. Laverick denies him. And what a goal that would have been. Great solo effort. And how much have they missed Matt Barlow, Gary? <laughs> A lot by the look of it. <laughs> it does feel like the witness of old at the moment. Yeah. Well, this is what I was saying at the start of the uh, show, that the Wild used to be, you know, a settling team, to find a couple of games to settle in, but um, they've had a, not a very good start so far. This is just what they needed. Solly Hull, though, certainly not rolling over. They've got claws and teeth of their own to bear. And this is going to be the key point now for Witness to manage the game in the sense of they can't afford oh. to let oh, the, Baron, yeah, the Barons to uh, show their teeth or use their claws. As Armstrong comfortable enough to go back to his D-man. They've thrown it forward. Thrown back in once more by Prowser. Turned over Britain. Just a little uh, chip pass that's going to be perhaps into the corner. Reynolds on the four check. 8.52 left in this period. Witness Wild 2, Solihull Barons nil. Do, do Barons have claws and teeth? I, well, thought, I thought they'd just put taxes up, or is that a sore point at the moment? <laughs> <laughs> Very topical. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on, hockey. <laughs> As that puck's going to sail all the way through, Laverick gets his stick down, Sheko skating in, perhaps doesn't quite feel comfortable, so Laverick's going to jump on that one. And early doors, it's the scores that go in the way of the Witness Wild. Yeah, with 8.23 remaining in this period, the score currently stands at Witness Wild 2. Solid Hulk Barons nil. Face off, right hand side of Avery. Won by the Barons. Maynard looks to play that out. Does so, they find Otterson in the middle. Otterson holds this puck for just a second before he tries to get it over to Mulcahy. Instead, it's going to be Kemp who benefits from that one. Coulter rides the body on. Great possession changeover, though, by the Barons. Mulcahy works out well. Kemp, some good ball play into the corner. Barron still in the Whoa. zone. Oh, he's got it back. Oh. Goes to go back door. And what a save that was from Lee Kemp. Well, Put his body in the way. Finney was caught stranded. I don't think that went the way they were hoping it was going to go. But it just shows that they can do it, Gary. Yeah, you've got to keep your head on a swivel. But Finney done well to keep that out. Well, it, it wasn't even Finney, was it? It was Kemp. And Coulter tries to slide it under us. We see Laverick Teddy Bear roll and get back up there. Back up the other way, Mulcahy looking for the quick break. Body on from Hughes. Yeah. 
Trying to get a penalty. Callum really can find Hager. Hager through one on one. Takes a shot down the throat of Laverick, and that's going to freeze it up. And this game is literally end to end. Very much so, Ben. It's just what the fans wanted, and I'm telling you right now, if I was a Wild fan, I'd be ecstatic with this first period. But is it? Are they going to burn themselves out, Gary? That's the question you've got to ask. Well, that's what I said before. This pace, who's going to give in first? Face off, left hand side of Leverick, won by the Wild. Shot comes through traffic, it's blocked and deflected. Stanley tries to get it out to Mulcahy, go, looks to go back, decides to put it on net instead. Kept alive, just kicked away. And now Whitehouse skates inside the dot, takes the shot Ooh. off the leg pads, shoveling away at the slater, and there's a little bit of afters with Stanley and Ruddick. Well, certainly not happy there. That's kind of, that looks like Mike Gilbert. Well, Callum Ruddick and Mike Gilbert there, just making sure that Finney's safe and protected. Six minutes 50 in this first period, still to go. 2 0 in favour of the Witness Wild. Oh, sorry, the YKK Witness Wild, I should say. Must admit, Ben, nice to see Mike Gilbert back out in the ice. Uh, he was certainly missed in that last game. Yeah, I believe he was uh, He was still enjoying his birthday celebrations. No cake for us, I notice. Yes, uh, so I know, yes. Words will be had. Face off, right hand side of Finney. Good drawing by the Barons. And here come. The Wild again with Hopkins, a little bit too much oh. on it as he tried to toe drag it round uh, Stokes. It's allowed, Whitehouse in. Good, poke check though, and he's managed to uh, upset Stokes again. Stokes there has got Chan uh, Bailey Challenge with him. Slater now is going to be there to pick up the loose puck. Turned over, however, to the Wild. Great little handling by Reynolds. Puts it on net straight into the glove of Laverick, who lets it go for Slater. Feeling comfortable, let's it round for Whitehouse. Whitehouse loses out to Britain, who rings that back round once more. And now sat behind his own net. Jordan Stokes, desperately trying to see a pass forward, manages to find it in Stanley. Turns round though, and immediately Murray's there. Good play. Hopkins saw that late. If he'd have been a, a step on the stride quicker there. And that's been interfered by a man coming off the bench. So they've had to blow the, uh, blow the play dead. And that's just unlucky the way it's happened. So they're going to do six men on the ice there. And that's going to be another penalty served to the Solihull Barons. It looks like Jordan Jolly's going to be the uh, bench warmer for that one. Well, they should have it where they're just all hanging in the top of the rafters there and they just drop in one by one. <laughs> Face off, left hand side of Leverick. Hager in for the draw against Otterson. Good tie up. Oh. And the Barons do well to see it off again. So far, the Wild, none for one on the power play. And here they come as they come through centre ice. Pass out to Hager on the right wing. Hager winds up, takes a shot. And I tell you what, Leverick reacted late to that one, but he does enough. Coulter loses out on the boards. They've managed to find Mulcahy, Mulcahy on the break. Good body on from Jonathan Williamson. Does enough to upset Mulcahy. 125 remaining in the power play. And here we go again. Giuseco cuts inside. Dumped into the corner. Hopkins is going to get there first. Sees off Crow. Well played by the Wild as he rotate that puck round. Looking for the opportunity. Under pressure Coulter from Maynard. Top of the shot. Williamson takes the shot right Ooh. through. Hopkins looking for the redirect and Laverick not comfortable, so he's going to freeze that one out with a minute gone on the power play. Yeah, Ben, I, I, I could see the Wild looking, to, desperately looking to get another point on the board before the period break. And, you know, with just five minutes left and uh, that one-man advantage at the moment the ideal time for him to get it. Face-off, right-hand side to Laverick. Shot all the way down, and that's absolute. If, if you had to teach somebody how to kill a penalty, Gary, that's it. <laughs> Shoot it on their net. If it goes in, it's a bonus. Otherwise, they've got to go all the way back down there and start again. 
Whitehouse throws it back in. 40 seconds now left on the power play. Hughes throws it forward. It's cut out halfway by Slater. Slater just does enough to steer it back towards Challenge. Bailey Challenge throws it forward again. Turned up by Hughes. Hughes picks it up, gets it to Greaves. Greaves holds it, decides to put it on net. Good stick flick from Laverick. Gilbert straight over there. But again, the Barons have cleared that out onto the stick of Finney. And Barlow for the wild. One last run at this with 10 seconds on the clock. Matt Barlow has already done enough. Comes round one, round two, round three. Shoots, Ooh. it's good. Stick save again. One second remains on the power play as that puck leaves the ring. And we're going to restart. But again, Gary, you might, well, might as well say the Barons have done it again. That's the second penalty kill, and now the Wild 0 for 2. Well, the Wild have got to definitely try and capitalise on these uh, power plays. Barons are doing really well on the kill, though. Face off one as Jolly returns to the ice. Back to five on five. 340 remains in the period. Hager looks like a man possessed. Giuseppe tried to put it across into the middle. You could see it was cool to there. Sat in, the, in that pocket in the slot. Oh, back the other way. Driving on the net. Oh, shit. Is Chandler. <laughs> Hager scoops it away. Giuseppe's on the foot race. Going to beat his man out. And there's a call. Even though Giuseppe was there, they're calling it an icing call. Wow. Well, that's very interesting. Controversial. And there's a few shake of the heads from all around here. I know the uh, we don't like to get involved in it much, Gary, but the, the officiating level has been questioned over the last few weeks. And, uh, Kemp certainly having a word there, and Gilbert. Not happy with the decision. Give him some cake, Mikey. He might. <laughs> <laughs> cake always wins. Well, it's going to be a face-off either way. Right-hand side of Finney. Barlow wins the draw. Turned over immediately. Whoa. Anderson sees Ooh. enough of it to get a shot off. Oh, Scraps the flick back yeah. in. Yeah, and Otterson now outside the dot. Sends it back in. Skating in. Oh. Big shot in from Crow. And Richard Crow let one rip there, but it's no accuracy on it really in the end. Oh, it's the ice. Into the corner. Playing it well. Out to Maynard. Maynard shoots. Oh, nice shot. Anderson looking for the tip in this time. Good save as well. And the Barons trying to work it out the corner, but the Wild are able to do so. Maynard's managed to get that in the neutral zone. Gilbert puts the body on. Creates some separation. Greaves. Ends up dumping it in, and that's going to be another icing call. Quite blatant, though, that one, Gary. Yeah. So, two minutes 32 remaining here in Planet Ice Witness. The YKK Witness Wild currently leading 2 0 over the Solid Hall Barons. And you kind of fancy them to go in with that lead, Ben. You would do, but you can't write anything off, especially from set pieces like this. I mean, we saw it before. With Murray, you can easily score off a face-off. Two minutes 32, as you say, though. Good tie-up between Whitehouse and Barlow. Comes out for the team in yellow as Gilbert's called into action down the wing. Dumps it in. Barlow's going to get there. Turned back around, however, by Stokes. Thrown through the middle, turned away by the Barons. Slater, that was. And now... Ruddick throws it forward, finds Barlow. Barlow skates his own. In a little bit of a battle with Challens. Good play on the half boards by the Wild, throw it back in. And I think you may be right, Gary, it looks like the Wild are just trying to kill the clock and go in two goals up in the period. Yeah, it certainly looks that way. As they have Solly old need to get out from behind their goal and try and put some pressure on that wild net well Stokes there he's just had all the time in the world to try and pick where he wanted the puck to go however the wild up ice doing their job and shutting off all the pass lanes before check finally came in and now we've resulted in this so they've managed to break away with challenge challenge that pace bit of three on two well he took the shot and he, ooh turned it back around the initial shot from nothing oh, it was the rebound got it back again to cause some danger, but the Wild are going to clear that right now. 
Hopkins. That's blown dead against Stokes. So we're going back up the other end, one minute nine. And you can say it has been an excellent first period for the Witness Wild. Yeah, Rich Bannon's got to go into the locker room feeling a lot happier with their performance in this game, especially this first period. Um, can they maintain it, Ben? Well, that's the key, isn't it? And down that left wing once more with the Wild. Look to put it across to Reynolds. Maynard cuts the pass out. Behind his own net. Into the final minute of play now. You can see 51, 50 seconds. Clock's ticking away. Looks to get a shot in. It's great save from Finney. But they're not done yet. Looking out Ooh. in front again, trying to find Otterson. It's cool to get in the way. Swept away. Giuseppe's going to get there, though, this time. Puts it back into the slot. No one there but Anderson, who steers it away. Haggis kept the play alive. Otterson now looks up ice. Finds Mulcahy, great little use of the blade. Taken off it by Hager. Turn back around, it's a 2 one, -one situation. Giuseco and Coulter. Giuseco though, leaves the puck behind. And that could have been the nail in the coffin for the period. Into the final few seconds, Murray running the clock out. Shot oh. in, and that was G with the shot of <laughs> the dying. Seconds. Well, Gary, what a performance that's been in the first period there for the Wild. Yeah, they've got to be really happy with that. Completely different looking Wild team from last game. But uh, with a 2 0 leader in Solid Hole Barons, we go into the break. Catch us for more action right after this. Brakes and Sun sponsor drop the puck. Well, welcome back for this second period. And, uh, well, Gary, what, what, what are we going to say about that first period apart from welcome back wild? Um, well, we've seen, we saw little glimmers of them in that last game, the last stream we did. And, but then it died off pretty quickly because Whitley shut them down. This is a, this is a good little tip or tap battle list and wild have capitalised twice. But when they've been gifted opportunities by the Barons, like those two power plays, they've not done nothing with them. And you think, you know, these are the things, this is your bread and butter, you need to be getting those. You're right, it is. And that's, you know, that's, and that the guarantee that's what Rich Hag is saying to him now. Guys, these are the part we are being gifted. I bet he's not saying, I bet he's not saying that. I bet he's saying, we, we need to get out, open that door because we need to get out on the ice yeah, and carry on doing what we've just done in the first period. Probably you're saying that. Well, the interesting part about this, Gary, and look, looking ahead now, right? So the Wild have, visit, have got these uh, Barons visiting today. The next week, next Saturday, they have the Dragons in the M56 Cup. Oh. Okay, which will be available at some point on our YouTube channel. Oh, yeah, we're going to record that game, I believe. Uh, be, and so that will go out as one of our classic Drop the Puck Extended Highlights episodes. Lovely, okay? lovely. That'll go out, obviously. And then the Sunday... They've got the Nottingham Lions in town. So let's just look at it now. Barons, Dragons, Lions. Now the Dragons doesn't count for the points, but it still counts for the momentum. 
and that's the key word here, momentum. Yeah, it goes back to what I said at the start of the show, where they need to start getting out of that little dweller battle, you know, the seller-dweller thing. Yeah, but that'll help them, but of course, it all depends on other results around the country. And of course it does. So you can see now that both sets of teams returning to the ice. Nice clean looking kit that, isn't it, the Barons one, Ben? It is, we spoke about the kits and I know this is a, an, another year where the Barons have produced something interesting. Formerly, the Barons had that fleur de lis pattern which was really hard to see. Yeah. Um, it, it, look, it looked great in person, but when you're trying to call a game from this far away, it caused some issues. Of course, the Wild with this new yellow strip as well. And I must point out that <coughs> for any viewers uh, watching this, it's always good to support your team buying a supporter shirt. Uh, merchandise is a really important thing for teams, generates much needed funds. So uh, show your support, put your hand in your pocket and buy a jersey. And we also must make you aware, guys, that if you are trying to contact us on social media, please do not fall for any false or spam links at the moment. We are aware that there are yeah. a high number of these fake links offering streams to sites. It's only anything that's branded with our actual BASN branding is uh, genuine stuff. But of course, you could always just drop us a line to get confirmation of it. Somebody always pick up the phone or... <laughs> <laughs> well, a message anyway. A me okay, a message, a message. Well, Gary, we can see that the starting lineups are making their way to the ice now, and it looks interesting again. This Coulter, Giuseppe Hager, starting line. Well, Rich said it in that last game. He wanted to... He, was, he wasn't comfortable with that line-up last week. But he certainly got his feet under the table on this one. Looks great. And Hughes and R Riddick are your, your back men. On the other hand, we've got Anderson, Otterson and Mulcahy starting forwards. And they're supported by Stokes and Maynard. But immediately, Giuseppe! Giuseppe! Took literally six seconds, eight seconds even, to put one on the board. Well, the and we'll see it again. <laughs> the Giuseppe, Giuseppe, yeah, inside, backhand. Leaves Leverick flat on the floor. I see it from the other angle there. But Gary, I think you had the best view of that one then. Yeah, absolutely stunned Barron's team there. They were looking at each other going, what happened? Gonna have to wake up quickly if they're gonna stay in this one. Well, boom, goes the dynamite. So. And just like that, Adam Giuseppe takes him in front even further. And immediately off the face off, we're away again. This time the Barons jump. Look at all! Oh, what a move that was! That was clever, that. And that was Brandon Anderson. Crow tries to feed it out to Anderson again. Anderson, one of the young guys that we saw skating for England under 21s against Denmark not so long ago, back in March, in fact. Yeah. Great move by Hager. Hager, can he get past Crow? He's got support arriving in Giuseppe. Giuseppe puts it back. Oh, what a no. team goal! Can you believe what we're seeing here, Gary? This isn't the same team. <laughs> well, this stream should come with an 18 warning because that was dirty. Well, <laughs> and that's classic Hager, isn't it? That, that, this is the wild we've been waiting to see all season. Wow. Right. Look at the faces on them Baron players. It's like something out of a video game. Well, they need to do something and do it quick if they want to stay in this one. And just like that, bang, bang, the Barons suffer a double sucker punch very early on in this second period. And it is quite clear whatever Hager has said to them in that locker room, it's gone along the lines of, shut the game down now. Well, <clears throat> are they feeling the after effects of last night's game? Bus legs are always a strong one. They're still managing to get puck on net, Gary, and you can only do that so many times before something's got to give. So don't write them off yet. It is an uphill battle, but it is a manageable one with the time left. As Greaves dumps that in, Stokes sees it around. 
Cut out by G, he's let it run. Recovered by Barlow, goes back. Murray plays it to G. G wearing the temporary 83 shirt. He will, I've been informed, be back in his traditional Whoa. number soon. Little nudge there. His 46 shirt on order. <laughs> As the Barons once again dump the puck in. And the Barons, dare I say, look like the Wild did last week. Yeah. Yeah, was, do you know what? I was only thinking that before. Stunned is the word. G involved in a, an incident on the, the near side board here with Whitehouse. Both players slow getting off that check. I think Whitehouse had uh, slammed the brakes on him, was a little bit extended, and G had already committed to the check himself. But it's mm. good to see both players yeah. leaving the ice under their own power. Hopefully, he's all right. And this uh, Barron's bench desperately need all the players. So it's a neutralised face-off. It will be back to the dot. Chandler and Britton in for the draw. Won by Nathan Britton of the Wild. Immediately, Jonathan Williamson throws it forward. Going to be chased down by Andy Hopkins. In the mix again is Josh Reynolds. And Reynolds, like I say, so prolific for them last season. Great experience. Still on that two-way, though, with Bradford. Britain swings it around. Kemp turns up ice, dumps it in, straight onto the stick of Paps. Uses the boards to clear it once more. Over to Williamson. Decides he's going to dump that into the corner. Chased down by Reynolds. Picks it up early. Takes a shot. Laverick wise to it. Gets down. Still fighting away while he's on the floor. And they've turned it back towards net. Reynolds comes out with it for the wild. Looks to go back in front. Britain can't get his stick down in time. Otterson can't get control of it as Kemp pokes it. But here come the Barons. Down that left wing. Looks to cut inside. Goes around the back of the net. Puts it through the danger zone. No one there but the wild. Mulcahy finally gets something on it. Straight into the chest of Finney. And well. Barons certainly showing they're not out of this one yet. Face off. Right hand side of Miles Finney. There's a loose stick, the uh, one of the officials just off camera. Just taking it to the bench. And we get underway again. Everyone a little eager. Ooh. It's gonna be Otterson and that's just second that went in for the draw. Shirt number there, a little crunch to find the hard to read a second. Either way, back into the action. Hager on the book once more. Decides to test Laverick from distance. Rebound picked up by Giseco. He's pushed it forward onto net. Barron's forced to reel that one in. And literal meaning of dump and chase, Gary. They dumped that straight on the net. Chased it in, looked for the rebounds. And Hager is certainly taking the lead on this game. Yeah. Do you know what? It's nice to see when it, somebody like that, a player of that quality, is coming back and doing good defensive work. Riddick under pressure from Maynard. Riddick and Maynard behind the boards. Find Otterson, play it back. Ooh, Barron's looking, looking, set something up. Otterson takes a shot. Well, he was screened out by Coulter. Oh. Looks for a second bite of the cherry. Can't quite get it through traffic. Coulter takes one across the legs there. It's not over yet though, Barron still in possession. Mulcahy, weird bounce off Riddick, it gives him opportunity, takes another shot, oh. flash of the glove and Miles Finney take a bow. We see that again. Well, it was fed out to Watterson. Bang, one time, Miles Finney literally got his glove up in time. And what a shot that was, but what a save. Highlight real stuff. Face off, right hand side. Once more of Finney's net. Murray trying to cause some pressure. Byron Stilling, get a shot Ooh. off. 
And some venom in that shot, I tell you, Gary. Now Whitehouse out in front. He's looking for the near, he's looking for the near side. We've got Gilbert. Gilbert breaks to Greaves. Greaves decides he's going to test Laverick. Laverick wise to it, pulls it out the air. Back the other way. Big golf swing. Looks to clear it all the way round. G called into action. And that's going to be a nice icing call there for the Wild as they head back up to the barren zone. 14.55 in this first period, second period even. 4 0 the way of the witness Wild. You could say the ice is tilted, but that's not a true reflection in the game. It's going to be Barlow in for the draw. Goes against Whitehouse. Byron's come out in possession, challenge immediately, foot down, tries to go forward, turned around, however, in a crucial danger zone for the Wild. Barlow, good. Tussle against the boards on that far side. G, kept it alive, gets Gilbert. Gilbert winds up, tests Ooh. Laverick. He comes off the body of challenge as he feels the full effect of that one. Whitehouse still not recovered from that hit earlier from G. He's just skates to the bench rather softly. Stokes now. Body on from Greaves. Driven but hard into the boards. Slater's going to get the loose one. Sends it back. Greaves there for the wild to scoop that in. Oh, gets a big body on and I leave with a Christmas souvenir for the kids. <laughs> <laughs> Wrap that for me. I'll take it to go. <laughs> well, nice little battle in the corner there between Greaves and Stokes. And again, Gary, dare I say, the Wild were missing Joe Greaves last week to throw that body around and be that disruptor. Yeah, do you know what? There was only, uh, they were missing that enforcer type player. Somebody who could give a little bit of a stick. Wild win the draw, immediately thrown forward by Kemp to Reynolds. Reynolds decides to test Laverick at range. And they're just going to skate down on him there just to show pressure. Laverick though spilt it up and jumped on it quickly. Well, he's not he's not been allowed to go to sleep, is he? And that's exactly what you want if you're the offensive team. You want that keeper to be on edge constantly because the more he's concentrating on, on edge, the more energy he's expelling. Oh. And at some point he's gonna lax and cause a mistake. You want to burn the keeper out early. And it's exactly what the wild are doing here. Uh, nothing for them at the moment. Looks up ice. Paps. Turn back around once more. Wild. Dispossessed them. Whoa. Another shot on from Reynolds. Britain's going to get over. Kemp keeps the play alive. Chandler. Backhands it forward. Little too much sauce on it. Puts it past Prosa. Williamson. All the time in the world to find Hopkins. Couldn't reel that one in. And Crow. Thank you very much. Back to Maynard and the Barons are going to try and slow pace down. Try and get the game to their rhythm. Turned over again. However, Maynard down the wing. Good effort from Williamson. Coulter cuts inside. Mukai still able to oh. get something on it. Put it on net. Kemp clears house. He's trying to go near post there. Two attempts. And Mulcahy's a danger man now for the Barons. Hago spotting that straight on. Oh. He's flying in, takes Mulcahy out the play. Williamson, all the time in the world. Great little pass call to Hager. Hager, under pressure, almost had his pocket picked. And now Watson turned it round again. Mulcahy, skates around Giseco. Fans on the shot, driven into the boards by Kemp. Barron's doing well to recycle these pucks now. Kemp looks to shut that down. Coulter in for the wild. Clears it out. Giuseco in the foot race. Giuseco and Maynard. And it's going to be Giuseco who gets there. Play still continues. Otterson now back for the Barons. Time ticking away. Those two quick sucker punch goals early on in this second period. The only scores in the period so far. Barons seem to have got wise quickly to the wild now. Leaves the puck behind, however, Anderton. That's going to allow the Wild in. And they're going to look to slow it down now before they explode with their pace, which is what they've been catching the Barons with. Here are the fans here at Planet Ice witnessing full voice behind their side. And as we said last week, 
Ooh. Good shot comes in down the throat of Finney. And again, second bite of the cherry. Riddick does enough to clear it. Haggart, wise to the clear. However, Stokes has fought well. He's managed to get the puck back across the zone. Stanley puts it in. Oh. Slater was looking for the tip in. Yeah. Two line up on it. Can't make anything of it. And we're going to break away with Hagger once more. And Coulter. Now Hagger's going to bench his time. Coulter and Gilbert. Coulter's brought down mid ice. Cries from the bench from Witness. Nothing. Slater back the other way. Let's one rip. Finney catches that in the glow in the face. Straight away. Good sportsmanship as Slater skates over to make sure he's okay. Yeah. Nasty bounce. And that, do you know what? They were very, very quick there. You can see that the, the tempo stepped up a little bit with the Barons. Their, um, their shots, they're taking these little one-timer shots, little tips off the passes. They're looking to try and tap something in, try and get on that score sheet. But so far, they're looking for the loose change, Gary, yeah. and that's it. Right now, unfortunately, Finney's holding on to a lot more than Laverick is. Yeah. So they have, they're, they're trying to squeeze it through those little gaps. Of course, last week, the last game, Finney was coughing up loads, so maybe he's learned his lesson already. Well, face-off will be left-hand side of Miles Finney's net. Barlow wins a draw, immediately gets it to GG. Under pressure from Chandler. Just going to throw that one round for Gilbert. Gilbert tried to find Barlow. It's thrown back in towards Finney. G drives man into the board, finishes the check. Now the Barons looking to see where they can go with this. It's ended up on the stick of Murray, who turns it through the neutral zone. Good pressure from Gilbert and Barlow. Greaves far side, calling for the pass. Time ticking away as we approach the halfway mark in this second period. Hayward, good battle on the boards. Gilbert and Barlow are over there to come out on the stick of the Barons. Can only find G in the neutral zone. Under pressure. Good communication as Greaves dumps it in. Haywood again. Gilbert drives his man. Hard. Rattles the plexi. Mulcahy. Greaves returns a favour. And now Paps looks up ice. G shadows his man. Put a beautiful pass into a dangerous position. However, Britain one-on-one. -on -one. Nathan Britain sits Laverick down. Laverick gets a little bit of it the first time, but he finishes it on the second. We'll see that again. Through one-on-one. Deeks him. He comes off the glove, the rebound. And Britain picks up his own rebound there. Laverick spilling up once more. And well, what can you say, Gary, apart from... YKK Witness Wild 5, Solihull Barons nil. Yeah, it's uh, it's definitely the result of the Wild. I think we've got a, a timeout called already. Yeah, we have, yeah. Uh, it's it's great result so far for the for the uh, Wild, but the Barons, they've really been, somebody, it's just been like a smash and grab this, and they're, they're a little bit shell-shocked, I think. They look like they were just starting to come into it a little bit there in that period, but already... The Wild have just chalked another one on. It's three in this period alone. Well, I'm looking over at the bench, Gary, and interestingly, Miles Finney's just sat down. Am I seeing what I think I'm seeing? Oh, oh no, he's returning. <laughs> I genuinely thought they were going to give Jake Lounge some ice time then. Oh, never mind. Maybe next week, hey, Phil. Hey, next time, <laughs> Phil. <laughs> Keep the checks coming. <laughs> So Finney goes back between the pipes. We go back to the centre dot. 9.27 on the clock and the Barons with damage limitation now. Very much feeling the way the Witness Wild did last week. Shot in from Crow off the traffic. Mulcahy again, kick save. Goes to Watterson. Watterson recycles that to get it to Maynard. Maynard back to Watterson. Good rotation now by the Barons. Obviously they came with a play and a plan. It's just starting to come together a little bit now. But was until then. Reynolds intercepts it. Gets around one man. Can't get around the second as it's picked off. Puck a little bit too far gone. And they've managed to break out with Otterson. Otterson gets around his man. Takes a shot. 
Well, he sent it wide. Finney scrambles to his feet. And the loose puck eludes all the Barons players. Scooped up by the Wild, and they're going to throw that forward. Hopkins couldn't reel it in. And he's got there. He's kept the play alive. Quick change from both sides. Maynard sends it over. Pulled out the air by Coulter. Dispossessed once more by Maynard. Maynard's got Hodgson in support. Drops it back and it's read like a book by the Wild as Wild break forward. Hager, Giseko, Coulter once more, but this time Giseko a stride ahead of Coulter with the puck and that's going to be an offside call. Well, close. Close call with the two Wild players bearing down on that Barron's net. And uh, the Barons breathe a sigh of relief. Face off in neutral zone, out in front of the Fresco penalty bin. It's a mouthful, lad, isn't it? Challenge. Goes back. Looks to be thrown forward by the Barons. Does so. Whitehouse, lovely little move to get round. Reynolds. Slater oh. goes to go back. Well, you can see the play there, trying to draw the Wild in. Haggart, Hughes tried the one-timer. Fans on the shot. And immediately, the Wild are there to try and support him. And again, Gary, that's something noticeably different from last week. Yeah. The tape-to-tape the, the -tape passing's a lot better. Dumped on there. Laverick's going to seal that one up as he had Giuseppe bearing down on him. Yeah, the positioning seems to be a lot better for the Wild in this game. Um, a little bit more precise. A little bit more determined as well, I think. But... Um, Tape to tape, good. Defensively, good. The Everything. other thing as well, I pick up on puck recycling. They are trying to be the first team to the second, sec you know, the second puck every yeah, time. Yeah, and that's what they were, they were lacking that vastly last time. So face off, left hand side of Labour. Into the corner, good pressure early on again. On Paps as the Wild looking to come out with that. Play off the back of the net, trying to create some space. Clever play by Barlow. Ooh, they're looking, they're looking. Barlow, oh, well stopped. Paps again, just seen off. Creates more space, gets it this time to Gilbert. If anybody knows this ice well, it's Mike Gilbert. However, Barron's have turned that one over, off the skate. Barlow. Takes Whoa. a shot again. Gilbert, but quick change as Hopkins comes on now. Barlow again for the Wild. And it's almost as if the Barons are deliberately trying to hold off, going for that puck, and they're trying to catch him on the back foot. Well, breaking away now. Off the leg pads. And great defensive work. I mean, last week, I know we keep going back to last week, but it is literally chalk and cheese, Gary. It is very much so. A lot more precise with their pass in the wild. A lot more determined. It's those defen that, the defensemen, though. They're actually getting in the way of the puck this week and giving Finney a break. And it's almost like there's a communication between them, which was lacking a lot in the last game. Well, that's going to have been a little uh, glove save there by Finney, which gets us a nice little face-off to the right-hand side of Miles Finney's net. Five minutes, 56 remaining in this second period. 5-0 in favour of the YKK Witness Wild. Whoa. Little bit of lacrosse going on in the middle. Anderton. Clever to play it back. Oh. Loses his edge as he spins round. George Slippy up there, you know, Ben. Williamson, shadows Otterson, puts it through the slot, no one there. Goes Ooh. backwards, Anderton. Pursued by oh, the Wild like Well. Otterson was uh, sat there, poised on the edge of the slot. And you can see now Mulcahy twisting and turning, trying to create something. Otterson round the back of the net. Good little net battle going oh. on with Anderton. A while do enough to poke that oh. away. They've cleared the zone. Sigh of relief. The Barons yeah. can't buy a goal at the moment. Kemp throws it forward once more. Quick 
line change for the Wild. Can the Barons capitalise on it? Maynard makes the call. They've thrown it forward. Oh. Oh, cut out again. And here come the Wild. Coulter at pace. Joe Coulter. Well, you can see what he was trying for there. Unable to do anything with it in the end. Hughes. To Hager. Gets it to Giuseppe. Giuseppe. Slams on, spins his man. Back to Coulter. Coulter looks to go back. Hand on a spin. And Laverick's going to freeze that one up. Well, 421 left in this second period. Face off up. The Solihull Barons end. And what a game we've got, Gary. Well, it's been end to end, hasn't it? But it's the wild of just ripped into this solid hull team as they look to break forward Barons again Slater using his head literally thrown forward Slater backhands it to Whitehouse Coulter Loses that one out, turns around. Whitehouse oh. right down the throat of Stanley trying to screen Finney there. I thought they were going to get that We'll then, see then. it again. Stanley looks to set out as the screen there. Whitehouse gets it up very high. The slot and lets one rip. And the Barons showing they're not down and out with this one. No, you can't write them up, can you? So some scores around the league at the moment. End of the first period, it's Solway Sharks 4, Blackburn, uh, Blackburn Hawks nil. And at the end of the second period, it's Whitley Warriors 9, Nottingham Lions 1. Well, kind of results you, you expect, really, from those teams. And, of course, that earlier result then of the Dragons going into overtime. Well, interesting. Points being shared all around the league. Obviously, we expected Solway and Whitley to take more points today, so that'll put them on 13 points and... 12 alike however the interesting one is this game Gary yeah this decides that mid table battle as we go face off left hand side of Miles Finney comfortable win for the wild kept alive by challenge again put it in towards net G called into action gets enough oh, nice. to clear the zone and the body starting to come on now from Paps. Greaves. Well, Paps picks his pocket. Let's it go for Chandler. But Murray gets across first. Anderson uses the kickboard. Solihull now trying to set something up. Out in front. Chandler's recovered it. Shot in. Good stick save by Finney as he sends it up over the plexi. Yeah, they're starting to, uh, starting to test Finney a bit now. Maybe they're looking to get on the score sheet if they can before the period break. They definitely need to do something. And again, the Wild just looking to weather this little bit of pressure from the Barons and clear it out, and they do so. Williamson, it's caught up with Hopkins. Great stretch pass to Reynolds. Tried to go back to Hopkins. He's done enough to force it down into the barren zone. Mulcahy, and he again, still the danger man. Mulcahy will break, given the opportunity. But what work by Britain that was. Barron's looking to clear it. Can't get as. We'll get as far as Reynolds, who's just let another one rip. And yeah, looked like it was going to be sailing off ice there, but Reynolds <laughs> picked it out of nowhere. Poor Graham Laverick has seen more rubber than the Marshalls at uh, Alton Park, I think. <laughs> On that starting grid, that's annoying, that. <laughs> I, the, surely at some point, Laverick's got to be having a word with his defenceman. Well, that's the thing, isn't it? I mean, defensively, they've looked a little bit scrappy. But they could just be tired, like we were saying. It could be bus legs. Well, the Wild caught them quickly. And have done the damage early. 
very much so like Whitley did last week here. And I think that's crucial. I think that's what the Wild had to do. Whoa. And now back up ice with Britain. Just going to calmly dump it on net. Laverick feels comfortable enough to let it loose. Challenge off ice. Big stretch pass. Whitehouse comes off the skates of one of the Wild players. Hager's going to skate with Slater. And Ruddick gets out to Williamson. Turn around once more by Challenge. Seen off by Coulter. Whitehouse jumps on it. Decides to have a shot. Breaks his stick. Hager's through though to one on one. And Hager picked this spot early, released it, and it's come out. Swept up by the Barons. Come off Hager. Still Rich Hager. Put it back to Coulter. Intercepted by. Chandler and we're into the final minutes of this second period Hager scoops it up neutral zone dumps it back down on net seen away by Leverick Barron's last throw of the dice in this second period Mola puts it on net seen off by Greaves still the wild as they move forward with Hughes Hughes is going to put one on net into the glove of Laverick and he freezes it this time with 29.7 seconds remaining. Well, I bet you they're praying for the end of this period now, Gary. Yeah, the, I wonder what the team talk's going to be because they're trying. You can see they're trying to put some pressure on the Wild net. I haven't managed to get that puck in there yet and the Wild have already done all the damage. Face-off will be the right hand side of Leverick as the uh, official there just retaining the broken toe blade of the Baron stick from before face off cleared out by the Barons Greaves calling for the pass lets it run for oops Barlow it was like he's managed to throw forward Barlow dying seconds of the period going to chase that one in big hit on Paps against the board. And they've still got it up there though. Greaves pulls it down. On the buzzer, oh. let's one rip. Goes straight over to Laverick to make sure he's all right. Good sportsmanship, Joe Greaves there. But Gary, we saw it again. A quick bang, bang, one, two from the Wild. Dazed the Barons early on. And by the time they found the legs under them again, Britain had made it pay and well, put another one on the board definitely because they're going in 5 nil up against the Solihull Barons they've got to be Rich Hacker's got to be so pleased but they can't go to sleep just yet exactly and we'll wait and see what happens in that third and final period when you can join us right after this short break <laughs> Brakes and Sons sponsor Drop the Puck. Welcome back for this third period. And interestingly, Gary, go on. I happen to notice on the scoreboard currently stands a two-minute penalty against the Wilds, Matt Barlow, which looks like it's going to kick in at the beginning of this period. Well, be interesting to find out what that was for, um, and no doubt we'll get told in due course. But uh, in the meantime, Ben. We have some scores around the doors for us. We do. So, obviously, the game played earlier today, the Sheffield Scimitars 4, Deeside Dragons 5. That's an overtime win. It was 4 all. Dragons nicking one in overtime. Captain Fantastic, as they call him down there, Super Snip. James <laughs> Parsons scoring the winner. In other news, 
Whitley Warriors 11. Are these current scores? Current scores. Whitley Warriors 11, Nottingham Lions 1. Wow. Okay. So And also the Blackburn Hawks on the rough end as well. It's currently Blackburn Hawks 0, Solway Sharks 6. So it's those two teams at the top again. Uh, and they're, they're giving some schooling lessons there by the look of it. Whitley finding their form again. I'm, I'm at a stage, Gary, where, especially Solway, after seeing them in the playoffs last year, which, of course, you can catch on our on our archive, on Drop the Puck, on our YouTube channel, if you want to go back. Oh, that's interesting. Ben, tell me more. <laughs> yeah, where we have uh, nine seasons of hockey, Gary, uh, including the brand-new Drop the Puck highlight show, which airs on a Friday night around half seven, giving you... All the action. Well, we aim to give you all the action and goals from around the Morley League. And that's in uh, conjunction with the teams as well. Thank it you is. for their support. Um, but, yeah, we saw Solway against the Streatham Redhawks. And they looked comfortable then. And they looked like they could quite easily be skating in that NIHL Planet Ice Premier Division. Uh, against the likes of you your whole Seahawks and your Telford Tigers. Well, we're still waiting for the uh, official announcement as to what the penalty was. It's been given to Barlow. And it's this, Ben, of course, will hand the Solid Hall Barons an advantage coming into this uh, third and final period. I think it's two minutes for sympathy, Gary. And that's what they've given them. <laughs> <laughs> a two, a, a five-on-four, two-minute sympathy. Well, judging by uh, the conversation going on in the, in the box below us, it would appear that it's probably um, for speaking to the officials. So as you look on the ice, it is a five-on-four power play in favour of the Solihull Barons. Mr. Orms raises his hand, checks with everyone, puck drop and we're off. And the Barons immediately look to try and set something up. Take it in. It's a roughing penalty assessed to Barlow. Bang on. Ooh. The, uh, the buzzer. So on 40 minutes, Matt Barlow, two minutes for roughing. But back the other way we go. Well, it was a silly penalty to give away, I must say. I didn't see anything. But nevertheless, it's handed the Barons an opportunity to try and get something on the board here. Oh, and Takes it in, tries to jam it in a tight... Well, a tight gap, but what a seal he's got on the, that pipe and them pads. Finney, however, while doing enough to turn it out. Minute of the power play gone. Working it round well. Takes a shot, Mulcahy. Blocked by Murray. There's a man gone down. That's Gilbert. He's saying right in front of the ref. Come on, you saw that. However. Clearly he didn't. Yeah, Jonathan Williamson's <laughs> done enough to disrupt the play. Trying to clear it out. Back to Anderton, takes a shot up into the net and above the plexi and Gilbert straight back over to Mr. Orms to carry on pleading his case. Well, you need to be careful because uh, they know they can't uh, argue with the official. Once the decision's been made, it's been made. You don't want to suffer a further penalty and another man off the ice. Face off, left-hand side of Miles Finney. Still 36 seconds in this power play to ride out. And it's going to be the wild to get there. Ruddick can't clear a challenge, keeps it in for the Barons. Into the corner once more. Barons looking to play it out, start the rotation once more, cycling the puck well. As I say, that case of the commentator, they spill it up, but Slater is going to recover it for them. Oh, the look in, the look in. Challenge looks poised to try and let one off. Backdoor effort come from Slater. And do you know what, Ben? I think. Five seconds left on this power play. Yeah, Barlow think... chomping at the bit to come out that trap door. Two, one, trap door opens and he's back to five on five. And the Wild do a great kill of that penalty. And Barlow's just uh, snubbed out anything there. 
and that's gone into the bench. <laughs> Hughes apologises to his teammates. 17.43 left in the game and a mountain to climb the Barons. It's now YKK Witness Wild 5, Solihull Barons nil. Well, it must be gutted the Barons for not getting something out of that uh, power play. One opportunity handed to them by the Wild and it's nothing for it. Face off in the neutral zone, won by the Wild. Down this right wing, Reynolds throws it with enough to go all the way around to Prowser. Hopkins straight into the corner, good battle ensues. Off the boards, Murray reads it well, pinches in. Murray and Reynolds. Hopkins comes into support on the point. Reynolds comes out with it. Still Reynolds. That's going to trickle through to Laverick, who's comfortably going to jump on that. And a little, uh, a little calmer, shall we say, Gary, of a start of the third period. Yeah, it's. Um, I think, I think the Barons are going to be kicking themselves for not getting something like that power play, uh, and the Wild will be quite confident now that they've managed to subdue them. G. Looks like he was going to be put under pressure to get there first, though. No Ooh. whistle from the officials. Do you know what, Ben? It's getting a little bit feisty out there. Great knock-on from Greaves. Let's Barlow loose. Gilbert in support. Tried to play it forward for Gilbert. It's come off Paps' skate. Out front again. Good redirect onto net. Oh. You could hear Murray calling for the pass. Oh. Gilbert backhand into the glove of Laverick and immediately Hayward clears out. Gilbert's not happy. And Hayward and Gilbert, there's a little bit of afters. Well, Greaves is in there with Paps. There's two going. Yeah, you've got Gilbert and Hayward, Paps. Uh, well, it looked like Paps here. It does. I'll, uh, there was a play that lost his edge. Gil it's Greaves in that altercation. Well, the one person you don't want is Greaves. <laughs> and quick look at, try and make out who that is. So I wonder what the officials are going to call here. And it's number 77, so it's Andrew Haywood was involved in that altercation then. It was Haywood and Gilbert. And it does look like it was Paps as well. So Paps swung for Greaves, loses his edge, goes down. And no sooner have we just got off the power play, then our technical director here will be loving pushing his buttons as we get to go back <laughs> on it. <laughs> you can see Hughes and Maynard there. Smiles all round. It's all fun and games at the end of the day. Well, they are. Gilbert <laughs> with some words for the officials. How many are we getting in there? Oh. Well, Gilbert and Greaves go the box. The double G in the fresco penalty box. And the official now just on a quiet word for the captains. Well, Gilbert and Greaves look like they're going to go for a... Oh, there we go. Who's that coming over? Is that Sam Prowser? It is. So it was Sam Prowser that was involved in the scuffle with Greaves off to the side. Apologies, not Paps. So it's Prowser and Greaves have both gone. I'm going to say they've gone for roughing coincidentals. We've got two on the board. Assessed to Gilbert. Still waiting for the official verdict. However, we've got a 5 on 4 in favour of the Solihull Barons. So, one, penalty, one set of penalties will be offset, won't they? They will be, which will be the Greaves and Prowser so, set. Yeah, so it'll just be the uh, Gilbert one. As we see on the yeah. scoreboard, two minutes to Gilbert. We'll await for the official verdict as we get back underway. Good tie up there by Hager on the face off. 
to start that penalty kill. Maynard, top of the shop. Otterson, body on from Hager. Maynard, Ooh. well, that was tight. Kept that in. Good job those blue lines are so thick. <laughs> Memo to Iceman. <laughs> Make him thinner. And Ruddock puts the body on the corner, which spills the puck up. And here's the penalties. So Prosser gets two minutes for roughing. Greaves gets two minutes for roughing. Is that's got under? Oh, Finney and Finney somehow kicks it out, and the Wilder there to sweep it away. Uh, no buzzer, so it never went in. And Gilbert gets two minutes for roughing as well. So Gilbert is the only one that's saving on the clock. Shot in, Finney sees that late. So the uh, offset penalties, Prosser in. Greaves, as Hopkins goes crashing into the netminder, and straight away, Laverick not happy with that, gloves off. Well, there's a red light on. Well, we'll see that again. And the light's gone off. They're yeah. probably going to say it's an interference. They will say netminder interference. Hopkins lost his edge or looked like something his skates were taken out from under him. He goes crashing into Laverick. They both end up literally in the back of the net along with the puck. However, Laverick's quick to jump up and drop the glove. And you are right, Gary. The uh, Slowly but surely, somebody is creeping on the dial of this, uh, the flame under the boiling pot that is or the pressure cooker, I should say, that is currently this game and the Solihull Barons. Well, with rising costs, I think we need to be careful how far we turn that up in here today. <laughs> <laughs> See what I did there, Ben. It was a bit of a... Yeah, don't do it again. OK. So, Laverick all uh, re-equipped with his equipment. Acquainted. Acquainted, that's the word I'm looking for. Reacquainted. Face-off will be right inside, and it is going to be Barlow and Whitehouse. Barlow makes sure he wins that draw. However, they've got it to Stanley. Stanley looks up. Paul Stanley takes a shot. Sails through the crease. Still Barron's power play. Let's remember that fact. As Barlow on the forecheck on Challenge. Just pressuring Bailey Challenge. Doesn't want to overcommit. 15 seconds left on the power play. Wild doing well to kill this. Reynolds causing all sorts of problems now for Stokes. Seven seconds, clock still ticking. Good stretch pass finds Whitehouse wide open. Two, one, trap door opens. Gilbert's back out. Played off the skate there and Finney saw it late on the redirect. So both Greaves and Prosa will return on next stoppage. However, for now, both teams are without the men. Williamson swings it back round. Murray couldn't clear the zone. Whitehouse puts it in again. Otterson skates straight onto the loose puck. Tries to get something going for the Barons. Shot comes in. Side Whoa. net and rolls around. Well, good play, Matt Barlow. Just diffuse that situation there. Yeah, and the Barons seem to be turning the screws a little bit on the wild now. Stokes. Under pressure from Giseco. Spills it up. Giseco picked the pocket, put it in the danger zone. And there's only Barons there. The Solihull side. Desperately trying to get something again. Puck put into that danger zone by Coulter this time. And there's not a wild player there. Haggers managed to keep it in again. And thick blue lines playing in advantage to the attacking teams. And Otterson now. Stretch pass over to Mulcahy. Good lay pad save from Finney. Kicks it wide and away. Otterson looking for a second bite of the cherry. Giseco kicks it over to G. Adam Giseco on the two way. Seems to be doing really well here at the wild. Cut out by Maynard. 
Turned around by G. Otterson throws it forward. Maynard looks to wind up, goes through the legs of Murray. But Murray slams the door shut a little bit quick and redirects our puck as now Hayward back on the ice. Gilbert. Left by G. Knocks it in. Picked up by Gilbert. Well read. Takes a shot. Laverick wasn't expecting that, I don't think. Reaction save. Another bit of a battle in shoes on the blue line. Good interjection of himself there. Injection into the play. And there's a call. Barlow's asking for a call off, off the puck. There's something happening off the play, but in the meantime, the Wild still looking to put that pressure on. Loose puck far side now. Hopkins does well to get back into the play. Oh, nice slam. And Barlow takes another shot. Laverick flashes the leather, sends it wide. Hughes. His shot redirected away, and now Kemp looks to put it in. Kemp knocked through into the corner. Whoa. And you can see now it is just pressure from the wild, keeping the Barons pinned, but they've broken out. 11 minutes, nine. And with every second that ticks away, the, uh, oh, grasp on the game, Finney, little post to post. Well saved. What a save. And the Barons are certainly testing this net. Thing is, Gary, is it too little too late? That's what we're saying, as the seconds are ticking away, there's not much time remaining. Just over half a period for five goals. But it's yeah. doable, it's doable. Well, it is, but... As they come again, it's the wild defence now, they're just upsetting the rhythm. Backhand though, Finney once more, sees the rubber, denies the Barons. Here comes Reynolds, down the wing. Big body oh. off from Challenge. Slams the door shut. <laughs> and we take, know Bailey Challenge can do that. Take that. Slater, shot deflected from Murray's stick, still in play. Ooh. Scooped up by Anderton in the corner. Maynard, one timer. Through traffic over the net. And the maintaining the. And the again. Push. Oh my goodness. Finney saw that one late. Murray does enough to hold on to it and swing it round. And it's a breakaway for Giuseppe. Apologies, not Giuseppe. Jake Meehan, so Meehan getting some ice time late in this game. Just held up on the boards by Maynard there. Meehan again. Coulter goes to put the body on. Mulcair gets the puck, however. Under pressure. Seen off by that wild defence. Murray uses the boards, can't clear it out. Mulcair keeps it alive. Gets it over to Otson. Otson looks up. Maynard skating in. Goes Ooh. to go in front for Anderton. Pushing it forward, and it's li they're literally trying to get it in that paint area now and see if they can throw it on. Trying to walk it in. Yeah, Finney, but here we go. With the wild all the way. Hager slams on. Barons put a stop to that momentum from the wild. Coulter looks like he's lost a little bit of his stick there. I think he's actually lost his blade. Gary, so Coulter has lost the blade on his skate. And that stoppage in play is going to bring Greaves and Prosa back out the box. Well, I've never seen that happen. No, no, unusual. Coulter will need to get that refitted. Oh, only here on top of the puck, though. <laughs> so, neutral face off. Ruddick puts it in. Gilbert looking to chase up on it. Paps and Gilbert on the boards. Stanley comes in there, sends it back around. Oh, well cut out. Wild with Williamson. Takes a oh. shot. Leg pad saved by Leverick. 
Barron's hold on to that for a second, decides to go with it. Puts it towards the net, dumped and chased in. Wild, yet again managed to clear the zone, only to the neutral zone this time. Slater gives it up to Stanley, Stanley goes to go backhand. And it was the wild defenseman there, it's tipped in finally. They've broken the deadlock. And it's Whitehouse with the goal, we'll see that again. Round the back of the net, put in that danger zone. Finds a five hole on Finney. And it's the old adage, Gary, if you put enough pucks on net, something's got to go in. Well, they've been turning the screws in all. And it's given them a point on the board. It's now Witness Wild five, Solihull Barons one. Well, 7.49 remaining in this period, Ben. Uh, all the boxes are empty. We're just looking for that uh, blade on the on the it's ice. It's gone. It, it's uh, already been picked up. All right, yeah. We found something else. Or the officials have just found something else. Just uh, to the right there. Yeah, so that will be obviously. I think what's happened is there was a divot on the kickboard. And that's how he's lost his blade. Ah, right. Okay, so. Solly Hull trying to turn the screws a little bit on the wild and put pressure on. It's paid. They've got a point on the board, but it's uh, still a long hill to, to climb yet. It is, Gary, and it's it's, it's getting steeper. Well, the longer they, they let this game go like this. They need to, if Solly won't want to try and get anything out of this, they need to get another point on the board quickly. Yeah, they do. But uh, I think the Wild have just been caught in a hop a little bit. They've relaxed a little, I think, in this... Uh, it's almost like they thought the game was done and dusted, yeah. which, to be fair, if we look at it on paper, they're not wrong, it is. However, you know, what, 7.49. So I think there's going to be some uh, on-ice repairs need doing. Which uh, will allow us just to... Uh, Talk about the pictures from the rest of uh, today's games. So, D-Side Dragons return to uh, hockey after a, a little bit of a break and come away with a uh, an overtime win, 5-4 away to Sheffield. And final scores around the doors. So the Whitney Warriors 11, Nottingham Lions 2. Well, they got another one on the board, so. Yeah, very much so. Uh, the Lions have been, been produced a good win the other week, but um, still struggling a little bit at the bottom there. But when, you, when you've got to go and play teams like Whitley, it's a tough ask. And it's the end of the second period in Blackburn. It's currently Blackburn Hawks 1, Solway Sharks 7. Wow. So it's a bit of a hill to climb there, Ben. But still plenty of time. The Hawks could claw back on that one. But it's still here, 7 minutes 49 remaining in this third and final period here at Planet Ice Witness. And it's some YKK Witness Wild 5, Solihull Barons 1. Fans enjoying the uh, atmosphere. Yeah, it's great to see. I mean, you can see them, they're just making some on ice repairs where the kickboard meets the ice right in the corner. That's where Coulter's just lost his blade. Or at least he's loosened it in the divot over there. Well, earn your money, referee. <laughs> you see there the you know what, ice ben, witness you, staff. You wouldn't get that in American football. <laughs> What, a referee admitting they were... No, OK. No, we'll go there. Filling <laughs> the holes in on the field. <laughs> I don't think they've got enough soil. No. <laughs> and so. the, uh, the match day officials here making sure the fans have got a good atmosphere. But, Gary, it's not unusual to get a good atmosphere here. Well... See what I did there? Some of the Solihull <laughs> fans there enjoying themselves. A little one there, all well wrapped up in the uh, teddy bear. Oh, it looks like a teddy bear outfit. Yeah. Get him into hockey at a young age. Can't go wrong. And, of course... Oh, nothing. Oh, there we go. Phone, there they are. Phone fingers. Witness hardcore, the wild ones. 
as Mr. Herring blows his whistle and we're going to get action resumed. 7.49 on the clock. Five goals to the YKK Witness Wild. One to the Solihull Barons. And you've got to think now, 7.49, Gary. Four goals, eight minutes. It can be Roughly. done, you know. It can be done. We've seen it, it done before. That would just be the look of the wild if they ended up going to overtime. Do you know what? That would be devastating now. However, less than it would be. But in the meantime, we're back underway, and it's the Barons who are throwing that forward. Well, we did say, Ben, you can't write Solly Hull off. They bring it round. Let it run. Good cut out by the Barons. They certainly taking it up another gear here. They're really making sure they can get in the way of them pucks. Turn it back around. Picked up by Britain. Britain at pace. Through the middle. Nathan Britain shoots. Causes a save by Laverick. Put it back in again to the paint. And well, you can see there, Hopkins is in there, in the paint, as is Britain. So, pressure building again, Gary. Which way is it going to go? Is it going to be the nail in the coffin for the YKK Witness Wild? Or would it be the possibility in a foothold back in the game for the Solihull Barons? Well, while they've got to maintain the pressure that they were showing in the first two periods, they've let it slip a little bit in this one. Hager loses out on the draw there. Anderson on the far side. And that's going to go out of play. So we're going to go face off to the right hand side of Graham Laverick's net, right hand side of our screens, Solihull defensive zone, kept in on that blue line again, straight down the throat of Laverick and Jake Meehan just circling around there looking for the scraps, Laverick not really spilling much up now, and the officials calling them over for the face off and they all gathered on the other side. <laughs> face off left hand side of Laverick again Hager loses out in the draw but Meehan sees an opportunity tries to go short side backhand Ooh. from Giuseppe Maynard soon sees the young boys off the puck throws it forward Otterson finds Anderson on the far side puts it across the middle oh. Finley oh and Hard into the boards back. on the far side there. Anderson's lost his helmet. Immediately has to leave the ice for safety reasons. Out in front again, Finney being tested. Puck back the other way. Barron's trying to desperately set something up and get something late in this third period. Oh. Uh, out in front again, Maynard's going to... Put that back into the action. Browse it. Slater and they're feeding it off again to Watson. Looks like he was trying to set something up. Good play by the Wild. They get in there and they clear that one out finally. 5.36, time ticking away. That's going to be an icing call. Back up to the zone for in front of Finney. Well, five minutes remaining and uh, the Wild's starting to fight back in this a little bit. But they're sustaining a lot of pressure from the Solly Hall Barons who are looking to try and get another point on the board, salvage something from this game. Right-hand side of Finney on the dot. Good tie-up. Challenge immediately pressured by the Wild. Over the top pass. Laverick comes flying out of his net to deal with that. Stanley scoops that one up. Throws it forward. Gains the zone. Stanley still into the corner. Backhands it into the danger zone. Finney steers it away. Challenge again. Takes a shot high into the net and above the plexi behind the net there of Miles Finney. And you've got to think now, Gary. Time is getting 
away from Solihull. Yeah. I think you can class it done and dusted. It just depends on what the final score is going to be. And, and, you know, they can have a say in this, obviously. They need to get another point on the board, but the Wild just seem to be doing enough to thwart him getting anywhere near that net. And a, another goal would certainly do that. However, Challenge has other ideas. Puts a stop to that play. Thrown him once more into the corner. Right, ridden hard into Ooh. the board. Here we Trying go. to get it on front. Shot comes in. Whoa. Maverick jumps on it. Seals it up, and that's the Barlow shot. And again, Matt Barlow has been prolific today for the Wild. He's been everywhere, and he's been... A he's been that difference, Ben. He's been that difference. But if I'm honest, I've got to say, it's not just Barlow. You can see it all over the board. Reynolds really putting his foot on, down today, and you've got G in there making a defensive pre the difference as well. The confidence is there that wasn't in the last game. Very much so. As the Barons look to play out once more. Turned back around by Williamson. Gilbert holds his line. Just gives that puck up. I don't think he meant to do that. Chandler is going to skate it through. Still Chandler puts it into the danger zone. Skating in hard. Looking for something there. Kemp's going to read that one. Jump on it. Throws it all the way to the opposite corner. Kept alive. And now body starting to go in. Check, certainly getting finished. Yeah. Four minutes remain. This is where it's going to get a bit scrappy now. Barlow has to hold that one for a second. Put it on neck. Laverick this time. Nope. Monkey see. Monkey do. Catch the glove. You're not <laughs> having it. <laughs> well, three minutes 52 remaining in this third and final period here at Planet Ice Witness. YKK Witness Wild with a 5 1 lead over the Solihull Barons. Reynolds takes a shot early, sails wide. Hopkins is over there though, keeps it going. Oh, and it's out. Otterson, at pace, looking to try and get something, looks to skate it in, Finney, second oh. bite to the cherry, wild, oh, wow. do enough to keep it away, still there, big diving poke check away from Finney, they've cleared the zone, Finney breathes a sigh of relief, of course. He'll be gutted to uh, not have the shutout. However, he's done well today. I must have. He known. still has seen rubber. Can't take it away. Otterson turns that over. Puts it across. Oh. Big hit. That's G on Otterson. Another shot in Mulcahy kick. Out save. Maynard scoops up the rebound. Three minutes remaining in this game. Playing for pride now. The Barons. Thrown away, skated onto by Reynolds. Knew he had the ride, the hit of Challens, who slammed the door shut and goes back the other way. Haggett loses out there to Challens. Challens takes a shot, goes glove side of Finney, and Finney pulls that one out the air. We'll see that again. Bailey Challens picks it up on the half boards in his own zone, skates it all the way through, lets one rip. It was a good diving save by Finney as he was going the opposite way. So face-off will be left-hand side of your screens, right-hand side of Miles Finney's net. Shot comes in again, challenge. And the Wild in possession, Giseko throws that forward. Meehan pursuing. Stokes takes it all away, another shot in. Finney freezes that one, 2.16 left on the clock. And albeit late, but the Barons starting to throw that puck on net a lot more. Yeah, and you can see they're getting frustrated because they're trying everything they can. And Finney's got every answer to them, stopping them with his legs, his hands, whatever he can. Hughes. Sees that out, Stokes under pressure. Meehan with the four check. Again, Meehan inside two minutes now. Stokes taking out the play by the Wild. 
Couldn't quite clear it. Looks for a short little nasty deflection there. Takes it into the corner. Hager now in control through the neutral zone. Hager lets it go for Giuseppe into the corner. Giuseppe plays it round quickly. Meehan didn't have the read. Whitehouse gets there first. Clears it away. Whoa. And out of his net comes Finney, and he come quite a way out for that one. Well, he had to because there was a solid hole player bearing down on that pull. Barlow! Well, he's put it into the pad somewhere of Laverick. You see it again. Barlow picks it up, round his man, cuts inside, lets it rip. And just enough to put it into Laverick's chest. Quick face off, 114 remaining. Again into the opposite corner. Gilbert picks it up under pressure. Holds it up. Where are they going to go? Barron's looking to try and get some space. Create something. Chandler down the wing. It's broken past Barlow. Puts it across. Backdoor skating in. It was Prouser and he's collided with Finney. Well, again, dangerous. You can see what they're trying to do. Yeah, they're just trying to get it in any way they can at the moment, but Finney's not flinching or he's not put off by anything that they're doing. 45.5 seconds left. Last ditch the attempt by uh, Solihull to try and get another point on the board. Maynard. Played forward for Otterson. They get it over, gets it back through the middle, picked up. Anderson takes a shot oh. off the blocker of Finney. Went high, blocker side. Finney read it well. Mulcahy. Very offensive line out at the moment. Time. Trickling through the fingers now, the Barons. Right into the chest of Finney. He's going to freeze that one with 9.6 seconds left. And that, Gary, you can call game pretty much. Yeah, I think that the Wild have ridden the storm a little bit in this third period. And uh, almost certainly looks like they're going to take the, uh, the points today. Solly Hull must be really, really disappointed. The bad weekend for them. Played in again from the face off. And there's your buzzer. And it's two points for the Witness Wild. And a tough weekend for the Solihull Barons. A great performance uh, by Finney. Finney was tested at times. Certainly had a lot to do. He was asked a lot of questions of. But interestingly, Gary, it's going to be the, uh, the fact that ultimately... The Wild have now picked up that win, which is going to give them momentum going into those next couple of games. And as we said, next Saturday for the Wild, they face the returning D-side Dragons in the first of those cup games, the M56 Cup. And then the Sunday is the Nottingham Lions, who I'm pretty sure there is no love lost. <laughs> well... Just, uh, just getting myself composed a little bit there, Ben. A brilliant result for the for the Wild. Just exactly what they needed after that last game uh, against Whitley. Kind of puts things back into perspective for them in the league and gets their footing going. Well, it does. We, we spoke about it before the game. There's this mid-table pack at the moment. The Hawks, the Wild and the Barons. And... Give or take, the Lions are jumping in and out of there at the moment. You've kind of got, to be fair to them, it's the Barons of the trapdoor. And it's the Barons, Lions, Sim sitting at the bottom. And then they're coming into like that, the Hawks, Wild, Mid Pack. And then as you kind of creeping up, you then get your stars. Well, the Barons were in fourth, of course, going into today. And obviously, uh, as I said earlier off camera there, it's been a bad weekend for them. So, you know, losing two games like that, on a weekend, it's going to knock them a little bit. But I still, I can still see them this season 
mid-table, battling away with the likes of the Wild, with the likes of the Hawks. And D-side. And D-side now, of course, they're only just starting their games. But uh, that win today will put them right in that mid-pack with all those other teams around the 2-4 point mark. Yeah, yeah. So it's going to be interesting to see. But as we've already said, Gary, very early doors yet. And if Witness can gain any momentum from today and carry on taking what that performance into the season, well, it's certainly not a write-off for them. Well, you've already mentioned earlier in the commentary there about the game, the upcoming games with the Wild. Uh, they could gain some valuable points in, in this uh, early part of the season. Yeah, they certainly could. Now, we know that you know the, the immediate next game where they can get points is the Lions. That is going to be a tough one. Matt Bradbury and, and, and Glosson out there at the moment. I've been teaching those kids how to skate, and the speed on them is something unreal. We know the main threat there is that Yoki Armour. We know if the Wild can shut him down, you know, it's going to cause problems. However, you can't take it you know, away from the likes of Glosson out there as well. But ultimately, they've got to look, look ahead to those other big games, the returning fixtures against the likes of Solway and Whitley again. You know, they're going to be some tough points to try and scrape out of. You'd hope maybe take them to overtime, try well, to scrape you, points you, out of You're also it. hoping, really, that other teams can do the job on them as well. The lower division teams, but yeah, it's, it's how big is that gap going to be? It'll be interesting to see how things pan out, of course. You catch this and all the highlights of uh, this weekend's fixtures, hopefully, on, uh, on our highlights show, which is Drop the Puck Highlights, which is available on Friday evenings. Um, Hopefully, we'll see other games, like I've said. You'll definitely see highlights from this one, yeah. which has been exciting, to say the least. Disappointing day for Solihull Hill Barons, but a really fruitful day for the Wild. It has, Gary. You know, I think it's the, the learning curve that was Whitley last week, there was some lessons taken out of that. Definitely worked on in training. OK, I think it, it is fair to say on paper, the calibre of Whitley versus Solihull, you're talking two different type of teams there. Um, so it was never going to be a true test. However, it was still a test enough, and you know, to, to Solihull, well done. You know, he didn't lie down, didn't roll over, didn't put the heads no, down, no, he didn't. And, and and fought right to the very end. And uh, I think that's a true, a true um, recognition of what this league is. None of the teams will roll over in this league. They'll battle to the end. Yeah. So which is why anybody can pinch points off anybody, and that's still a fact. Well, they were missing a few players around the Solihull, but of course that long trip last night won't have helped them at all. So that's probably detrimental to them in some way. Yeah. But nevertheless, can't take it away, Witness Wild. Earning the points here today at Plans House Witness. It's been a great day. I've been Gary Lee. I've been Ben Lee. And we've been Drop, Drop the, the Puck. puck.